the musical details in side order are pure genius. You may have already noticed that the gelatins are each named after musical terms, but have you ever wondered what each of them meant or why they were given those names? Let's take a dive together into the symphony of side order. When I haven't been getting humbled by gelatinous fish, I've been having a blast with Side Order, Splatoon 3's expansion pass. As a gamer and a musician, I'm always keeping a close ear out for good sound design and music in games, and Splatoon has consistently impressed me with its attention to detail, Side Order being no exception. I immediately recognized many of the musical terms featured in Side Order as I was playing, so I took the time to do some digging and provide you with more than just the one sentence that's on their wiki pages. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of each enemy in the expansion, provide some musical context to their names, and make some theories about why each term was selected and what it reveals about the designs and characteristics of the gelatins. Please note that this video contains spoilers for gameplay and enemies you'll encounter, including bosses in a later section of the video. So, if you'd rather be surprised by what horrors await you in-game, now's your chance to click away. The gelatins are the enemies you encounter in side order as you ascend the Spire of Order, a repeatable challenge that exists in the Memverse, a digital world of Marina's creation. They appear as fish-like robotic skeletons covered in a black gelatinous form. According to the Splatoon wiki, the name gelatin is a combination of the words jelly and skeleton, which I think is a pretty accurate description of these guys. It also serves as an ingenious pun on gelatin, which is exactly what they look like they're made of. As you encounter different types of gelatins, their names and information are collected in a gelatin field guide. This is where our journey begins. Let me start by giving a little bit of musical context. In most music, musicians won't see a piece that says, play this part sort of quiet, or play this part really fast. Instead, it'll say mezzo piano, or presto. Music features a ton of these fancy words, and most of them are Italian. The reason for this is that when music was first being written down, Italian composers were some of the first to make such notations. So naturally, they wrote them down in their native language of Italian. And it stuck even as music became more accessible to people of all classes and languages. Nowadays, Italian is still the standard to maintain consistency with older pieces, but there are exceptions here or there. You'll see that Side Order largely draws from these Italian terms and uses them as names for the gelatins to create a cohesive musical theme and to communicate different features of each gelatin to the players. Let's start with the Marching Andante. These are the basic run-of-the-mill gelatin. They're exceedingly common and can spawn on practically any level. While they aren't particularly dangerous, large groups of them can quickly overwhelm you. This gelatin's name is pretty straightforward. In music, Andante is a tempo marking, meaning that it indicates what speed a section of music is intended to be played at, in this case a moderately slow tempo. Though there's no strict cutoff or range for exactly what tempo constitutes Andante, multiple sources note that it commonly falls around 75 BPM, or beats per minute. Here's what that sounds like. In Italian, Andante literally translates to going. As for the marching in Marching Andante, their name implies that they're constantly on the move at an andante tempo, not too fast, but not too slow. It marches purposefully towards the player. Just make sure you're not standing still for too long or they might catch up to you. Battering lentos are slow but tanky. Their primary method of attack is headbutting the crap out of you once they get close enough and they can hit hard. Their name also makes a lot of sense, lento being another tempo that means slow, slowly, sluggish, and typically represents 40 to 45 BPM. Here's what that sounds like. 
Again, there isn't an official range for any tempo, and composers may even mark their intended BPM directly on the piece, alongside a descriptor like lento. Together, the name refers to the battering lento's movement speed and method of attack, like a battering ram. While they're extremely slow, they're steady and tenacious in their goal to batter and headbutt you and everything you know and love. As a final note, the battering lentos can also spawn carrying other gelatins on their backs, springing spiccatos, whirling accelerandos, and drizzling capriciosos. It's worth mentioning that none of those terms conflict with lento in music. They can all exist together in a piece. Though, if an accelerando appears, the piece will likely not stay lento for long. Speaking of which, whirling accelerandos are like spinning tops. Once spotting you, they'll begin rotating until they've picked up enough speed to launch towards you, bouncing between walls, leaving a trail of ink, and harming you on contact. In music, accelerando is a term that tells musicians to increase the tempo or speed up. It's not an instantaneous tempo change, we're not going immediately from slow to fast, but instead a gradual increase of speed. And their movement consists of, well, whirling around. You see, Splatoon could have called this enemy fast spinny guy or, I don't know, rotating roundy, but they chose a name that cleverly illustrates their movement and helps to inform how they can be defeated. They're not just fast, they increase their speed at a predetermined interval. You learn pretty quickly that you need to take them out before they've completed their accelerando, or else they'll be too fast. Also, whirling accelerando just sounds a lot cooler than fast spinny guy. While the homing arpeggio may be my least favorite gelatin in the game, it has my favorite name by far. When I first heard the noises this gelatin makes, I knew I had to make this video. This enemy travels through the air, chasing you like the torpedo sub weapon and exploding on contact with any surface, including your face. Homing refers to the behavior of the homing arpeggios to track and follow the player. In music, the word arpeggio comes from arpeggiare, which means to play on a harp. It refers to the notes of a chord played in succession, either ascending or descending. We'll talk a little bit more about chords in a minute, but what you need to know now is that a chord is three or more notes played simultaneously to create a particular sound. An arpeggio, however, takes those three or more notes and plays them one by one, essentially breaking up the chord. This gelatin actually plays an arpeggio as it flies towards you. In this case, the notes of the chord are arpeggiated from low to high. It chirps out an arpeggio that gradually increases in tempo. The robotic sound used, combined with the intensifying speed, also serves as an alarm to the fact that there is a sentient missile rapidly approaching your location, and before you know it, you're down to your last precious life and reconsidering your earlier confidence in choosing that danger level. Homing arpeggios can spawn on their own in certain conditions but you'll commonly see them attached to spawning accordos. The spawning accordo releases or spawns homing arpeggios from its hair? Oh, it's like an anglerfish. This thing is an esca? Okay, anyways, here's where the real genius comes into play. Accordo is a chord. Remember when I said we would talk more about chords in a minute? Chords are like the bread and butter of music. You can make all kinds of chords, depending on what key you're playing in and what notes you're playing. They can spark a number of different feelings in listeners by sounding harmonic, dissonant, practically anything. Like I said earlier, arpeggios refer to the notes of a chord sounding separately, one after the other. But accordo refers to playing them all at once. Accordos are the whole complete sound, while arpeggios are the parts. In game, arpeggios detach themselves from accordos and move towards players. They're different executions of the same musical thought. Both enemies are part of one unit. 
and it's just pure naming genius. Gosh, I love Splatoon. Long, not so tan, but still potentially handsome, the towering Noblemente is almost like Side Order's version of Salmon Run Stinger and Story Mode's Octo Sniper. Stacked high atop cylindrical sections, this gelatin fires a long range blast of ink across its laser sight, inking the ground and dealing major damage if it hits you. This gelatin is undoubtedly towering above everything due to its sheer height. Noblemente is a music term invented by composer Edward Elgar, most commonly known for his Enigma variations and pomp and circumstance. Yeah, the graduation song. The term means refined, chaste, lofty, and literally translates to nobly. It evokes a sense of superiority and nobility. Besides emphasizing its literal height with lofty, I think its name may refer to an overall feeling of self-importance that I imagine this gelatin experiences. He has a degree, he's tall, and he is deadly skilled with a rifle. The drizzling Capriccioso floats across the map with its sprinkler-like tail in the air, spinning like a propeller and splattering ink all over the ground. Capriccioso tells a musician to play in a free, playful, and impulsive style, and comes from the word Capriccio, which means a lively piece of music. Despite how much I hate these guys, their name has made me think they're having a great time in side order. They drizzle ink aimlessly and impulsively all over your splat zone wherever they please, floating around freely and just having a fun day while ruining mine. But hey, they can keep playing around and enjoying themselves as long as it's nowhere near me! Deceptively adorable, swarming languendos are the smallest gelatins you'll encounter in side order. Despite their diminutive stature, their strength comes in numbers, as they tend to spawn in groups and can quickly leave behind long trails of ink. Swarming refers to their swarming behavior. Where you see one of these, the others are never far behind. Languendo is a style notation, meaning to perform in a languid, feeble, dramatic style. And the word it comes from, languid, means weak or faint. When it comes to expression markings and style in music, most terms are pretty subjective. Some examples of style other than languendo would be cantable in a singing style, dolce, sweet, and maestoso, majestic. Think of them as musical vibe indicators. Musicians can choose to express these styles in different ways, but ultimately, these terms just add extra flavor to the other aspects of a piece, like its tempo, key, dynamics, and articulation. The style marking on its own doesn't give explicit directions to musicians. It's only when they're combined with other terms that they really begin to make an impact. Slow tempo, minor key, and legato articulated passages will naturally sound sad, dreary, and maybe even languendo. Whereas loud dynamics, major key, marcato articulated passages will sound triumphant, full, and maestoso. All that in mind, style on its own is tough to define musically, so I had a hard time rationalizing this gelatin's name outside of it just fits. But I would say the Swarming Languendo is named because it is feeble on its own, but that's almost a misnomer. It's branded as innocent and pathetic, but swarms of these guys can easily overwhelm and overpower you. It's really only Languendo when it's not swarming, which is practically never. Despite what its name will have you believe, you can't underestimate this gelatin. I've made that mistake. One final note on this gelatin, and it's a little bit of a stretch, but when they stand up, they kind of look like music notes. With a whole row of them, it's almost like a song. 
another gelatin name for style, the gushing Trianfale spits up a geyser of ink in the air, taking aim with its orb thing before spitting it towards you in the form of a splat bomb or toxic mist. Gushing describes the powerful stream of ink this gelatin spits to keep its projectile elevated. Trianfale can literally be translated to triumphal and indicates a triumphant style in music. As was the case for the swarming languendo, this style marking indicates a feeling rather than a strict musical principle. While the wiki notes this gelatin may be referencing Marcia Trianfale, a song associated with the Pope and the Vatican, I didn't quite see the relation. Instead, I theorize that this gelatin is named Trianfale for the sea creature it resembles, the clam. Its sphere resembles a clam's pearl. In the wild, clams can make pearls to trap and expel parasites and irritants. But to humans, pearls are seen as valuable and precious. It almost lures you in. The gushing Trianfale brandishes its pearl proudly, not because of its value, but because it's glad to get rid of it. And with luck, it'll get rid of you too. The specialty of the springing spiccato is the splashdown. These gelatins will bounce around the map trying to goomba stomp your head. Spiccato is a technique for stringed instruments performed with a slight lifting of the bow after each note. Classical stringed instruments like violin and cello are often played using a bow, which is a fancy word for this expensive stick made of horsehair. Can you tell I'm not a string player? Both parts of its name refer to its method of travel, bouncing. In fact, spiccato is even sometimes referred to as bouncy bows. Check out this violinist using spiccato. Notice how the bow lightly bounces off the strings instead of being dragged across them like regular violin playing. Much like the motion of the bow, the springing spiccato decides to bounce onto my skull instead of swimming up to me like a reasonable gelatin. In any case, the term employed here fits the defining characteristic of this enemy perfectly. Side order Shia's gelatins, the panicking Alamambo will frantically flee from players, only slowing down when they've lost sight of the Octoling Menace, or when their wheels get stuck in your ink. Sorry, buddy. Panic is a nod to how easily they're startled, with their only intention being to get as far away from you as possible, even if it means accidentally scurrying into your ink. The other part of their name, Alamambo, has a little more fun. Ala, simply meaning in the style of, is a musical direction here to perform in the style of a mambo, a type of Cuban dance music. Mambo. Yes, like that mambo is characterized by its fast and energetic style. This enemy also has brass valves on its body that most closely resemble a trumpet, an instrument that's extremely common in mambo music. Imagine becoming so startled that you violently and passionately dance away from the threat. That's the panicking a la mambo. The wiki also makes an excellent note about mambo potentially being a pun on manbo, which is the Japanese word for ocean sunfish, the fish this gelatin is based on. Knowing how much Splatoon loves puns and double meanings, I fully believe that's an intentional part of its name. You may have noticed that the portal, despite appearing in the gelatin field guide, is not named after a musical term. I imagine the reasoning for not including a term here was to maintain the clarity of the portal's function to players. It spawns more gelatins. And that's it. I still wanted to include this in the video because I actually have a couple of recommendations for an alternative name for portals that would fit the musical naming conventions. Option 1. Da Capo. Da Capo, meaning to the beginning, is used in musical works that have multiple endings or large repeated sections. Da Capo, written in music, prevents the need to reprint large sections by letting the musician know to go back to the first measure and play through that section of the piece again, continuing either until the end of a piece is reached or there's another notation stating otherwise. For the portal, calling it da capo acknowledges that it's the point of origin for the gelatins. 
They repeatedly spawn from Dacapo, as that is their beginning, and they're going to relentlessly spew from it until the figurative end of the piece, or level, is reached. Option 2. Ostinato. Ostinato refers to a repeated musical phrase or rhythm, specifically a short musical idea that is repeated exactly throughout a musical work. Splatoon music utilizes ostinato bass lines frequently. Pay close attention to the sound of the bass in Crater Aider's routine, and listen to how the rhythm repeats throughout the entire song. Since portals continuously spawn groups of gelatins throughout the course of a level, they are the constant accompaniment to any map in which they appear. At least, until you destroy them. While I do think that Portal is a better name functionally for gameplay purposes, these are just two fun ideas off the top of my head to fit them with the rest of the gelatin names. If you have another idea, leave a comment, let me know! Next, I'll be talking about bosses. From this point on in the video, I want to give a big spoiler warning. If you've not completed the expansion, I order you to leave unless you want to be spoiled. The asynchronous Rondo is a towering boss made of rotating circular sections of ascending sizes that make sounds straight out of a horror movie. Each of the boss's sections seem to spin in different directions and speeds, only lining up when it's about to launch a direct attack. Or in other words, it's asynchronous. It is by design out of sync. Rondo is a classic form of music in which the main melodic idea returns two or three times in alternation with other melodies. It's a musical form with a recurring leading theme. Almost like the pattern of verse chorus verse chorus, listeners of a piece in Rondo form will hear melodic ideas alternate and return multiple times throughout its duration. But together, the words asynchronous and Rondo are almost an oxymoron. Rondo follows a specific formula of repetition, but something that's asynchronous is chaotic and unpredictable. When you add in the fact that it plays pieces of off-the-hook song Ebb and Flow distorted and out of order, it seems like this boss is almost at war with itself. We know from Side Order's story that Marina worked alongside other Octoling architects to create the members, the space in which all of these creatures exist. And the story's main conflict emerges from the disconnect between Marina's ideas and the ideas of the architects. I think that the asynchronous Rondo is a nod to that cognitive dissonance. It's torn between the different ideas of its creators. It's unstable. It's confused. And it killed me again. This boss is ball. Pinging is a nod to the boss's mechanic of bouncing between the bumpers on the stage like a pinball. Marchale, literally translating to martial, is a style which indicates musicians to play in a military-like style, usually a march. The enemies named after styles have all been tough for me to figure out, and this one was the hardest. How can it march when it has no legs, and even lacks the ability to move on its own besides the occasional charge attack? I mean, this thing literally gets pushed around for the majority of the fight, sometimes even by fellow gelatins. After racking my brain, my theory for this boss was actually sparked by a comment posted on a music forum by user ByeBye. They say Marchale does describe a march, but it can also mean with a roar and fighting spirit. And boy, does this boss keep fighting. When I first faced it, I certainly got a sense of its restless fighting spirit, as once I had cracked its shell, there was just another one under it, and another one under that. The pinging Marchale kept battling on, and its power stayed constant throughout the fight despite diminishing in size up to the bitter end. Like the asynchronous Rondo, the pinging Marchale also plays a distorted off the hook song, this time Fly Octo Fly. <laughs> The first time we hear that song during the final boss of the Octo expansion, there is absolutely a Marcelle feeling that this boss may be calling back to. 
and it's pinging around in different parts of that song. Overall, I would say this gelatin is named for its relentless spirit, both in the way that it battles and the song that it sings. Marina Agitando is a special boss that you face in the tutorial of the Spire of Order. You reach her after a shortened ascent to the top, only 10 floors compared to the regular 30 of the gameplay loop. This boss is a version of the existing character Marina while under the control of Order itself. I love the detail of the headset she's wearing having buttons like a game controller on either side, showing she's literally being controlled. Agitado means agitated and restless or hurried in movement or style, while agitando in Spanish means waving or shaking, but can also refer to a characteristic of Spanish dance. When we listen to the song she sings, Unconscious, you can clearly hear anxiety and agitation in her voice, but also a creeping feeling that she's being held back and clearly is not herself. Just look at her stance and body language as she performs as Marina Agitando versus her dancing with Off the Hook as her regular self. We can also hear the DJ Octavio leitmotif throughout her song, which is a callback to her being controlled back when she served in the Octarian army. As I completed this level, I definitely got a feel for all of these elements, but actually stepping back to identify the aspects of this boss's design that created these feelings really makes me appreciate the effort and attention to detail Splatoon constantly puts out. I saved the best for last because the parallel cannon is packed with meaning. This boss is more of an encounter than a single entity. You face off against a team of sorta inklings with metal faces and wide red eyes, each complete with their own evil pearl drone. Canon is a musical form and compositional technique based on the principle of strict imitation in which an initial melody is imitated at a specific time interval by one or more parts. Essentially, Canon features orderly repetition of musical ideas throughout a piece. Here's an example by Bach. Notice how the same melody repeats itself over and over. It's clear that the parallel canon bears a striking resemblance to the Inklings we know and love. Even Oct notes in the Gelatin Field Guide that these enemies look a lot like Eight. They are the repetition, the echoes of us. But in side order, we play as an octoling, and all of the enemies in the parallel canon are inklings. At least, as far as I can tell, look at their fingers. That leads us to the first word in its name, parallel, to be similar or analogous to another. Again, we know that octolings worked on the members alongside Marina, so perhaps they included inklings to nod to the parallel lives they live, inklings on the surface and octolings underground existing similarly, but like parallel lines, never intersecting. There is a second meaning to this boss, which many of you may have already been thinking of, and that's understood by instead defining canon as canonical, or in story terms, an official part of a story. In this interpretation, the parallel canon represents an alternate reality. Also, Marina intended for Agent 4, Splatoon 2's story mode protagonist, to serve as a security in the members. And one inkling in the parallel canon appears to have Agent 4's hairstyle. I've even read that if you have Splatoon 2 data on your Switch, the parallel canon will copy the hairstyle of your Agent 4. I'm certain that both definitions of canon were considered when naming this boss, and while we may not be able to find all of the answers, the parallel canon sparks a lot of interesting question about inklings and octolings, order and chaos, and original versus imitation. Thanks for making it this far in the video. I have a few extra notes that I couldn't find a better spot to talk about. First being, I will not be talking about Overlorder. While it has a ton of cool details, I don't believe that it fits into the theme of this video. It's definitely a fun boss though. 
Next, check out this leap motif that can be found throughout the expansion. It's the level clear sound. It's the music in the trailer. And it's the beat at the final battle. Speaking of the final battle, the title of that song, Spectrum Obligato, features the musical term obligato, which means play exactly as written or don't improvise. And to me, that feels like a callback to the original theme of order, how everything should be perfect, predictable, and unchanging. I love how Splatoon uses themes and motifs to create continuity and cohesion across its music. Music has always been a key element throughout the Splatoon franchise, from the heavenly melody of the Calamari incantation to the reality-shattering power of Pearl's singing voice, plus the various in-universe bands, each with their own styles and instrumentations. Splatoon has also put a great emphasis on its naming conventions, with idol names, weapons, items, stages, and the musical names of the Gelatons, everything in the game is named thoughtfully and intentionally, sometimes with a fun pun, all to fit the game's vibrant themes and immerse you in the lively universe of Splatoon. The wiki posits that Gelatons are named after musical terminology because Marina, who designed them, is a musician herself, but that it may also be because all musical compositions require a certain level of mathematical order to have harmony in them. I love the idea that they turn to music theory in this expansion to evoke the formulaic and mathematical nature of music. After all, music follows a strict set of rules. But the best advancements in music were made by the rule breakers, the chaotic. And the greatest music is played with expression and style unique to the musicians playing it. It's formulaic on paper, but in execution, there are mistakes. There's improvisation. There's harmony but there isn't always order. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and share as I put a lot of time and passion into this as my very first video essay. If you have additional ideas or insight for any gelatin's name, please let me know in the comments or swing by my Twitch stream. I hope you learned a few things and good luck on your next trip up the spire of order.